Hey guys, Salvador Brigman here with the Crowdfunding Demystified podcast, the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel, and crowdcrux.com. And I'm wearing shades today because it is a bit sunny out here in Brooklyn, New York. Not trying to be shady, pun, <laughs> but uh, I'm actually here looking at the Manhattan skyline. I'll get out of the way here so you can check it out. It's really the most beautiful view that, I mean, I think, uh, all around, you know, you can go to Jersey, you can go to Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn has just an amazing view of the Manhattan skyline. So I'll give you a bit of a different background for the today's video. And today's video is actually gonna be talking about how to start a new crowdfunding platform. And I actually wanna hone in on more of the technical aspect. I will go more into the marketing component after this, you know, another video, but I wanna go over, for me, the four ways that you can go down to start a crowdfunding platform and how to do that in a technical sense. So who am I, like, wh what do I know about this? Um, besides being a blogger, you know, writing about crowdfunding since 2012, I did before that start a web development company. So I have built a crowdfunding platform for a client. I've definitely investigated many of the ways to go about doing that, how to do it in the most cost effective way. And I do have a background in development. So this is gonna sort of help you out and I actually did have a reader. I've done a article on a similar topic who reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, Sal, you saved me thousands of dollars from a development company because rather than spending you know, $10,000 on a web development agency, you suggested this route and thank you so much for doing that. So I hope that this video gives you a few ideas and sparks a few ways to start a crowdfunding platform. So the first way is actually the most expensive the most costly and the most time intensive way. And that is to build a platform from the ground up. That means no coding before that. You literally are building a platform from the ground up. You're doing all the front end design, you're doing all the back end design, and this is gonna cost a lot of money. So I really don't recommend going down this route unless you have funding for your actual startup company and you have a significant investment uh, ability. Also, you really need a development team that knows exactly what they're doing. Like you don't want someone who's a newbie trying to do this. You need a team that has a proven history. If you yourself have coding knowledge, awesome. You know, the, the people listening to or watching this video, you're gonna have different skill sets. Some of you might have coding knowledge, others might not. So what I recommend is going to vary based on your abilities and your resources. The second way is what I think of as probably the, the, the second easiest way. Like, if you're trying to go about actually having the most customization ability, this is a good way to go about it. And that is to build a crowdfunding platform off of an open source framework. So this is what the, the route we actually went through for the client. We built a crowdfunding platform off of Katars, which is an open source framework. We actually had a like, do a lot of grunt work to get it to a position where we could build off of that framework. Like, it was kind of buggy, but there are other open source frameworks that you can use to build a crowdfunding platform. And this is an easy way because now you have like a foundation or a bedrock to build off of. You're not just coming like full customization, all this upfront, really having to figure out all that kind of um, architecture for the framework. You're building off of something. So that, that's, I think, a really good option if you do have the ability to invest money into this website, but you're not looking to really break the bank here. And you also obviously need to, to uh, look into the developers that you're hiring and make sure that you have accurate wireframes so that they're not just like making guesses and assumptions. You have a wireframe for how every single page looks so that you get exactly what you want. Now the third way, this is actually what I would recommend for the majority of you out there. And the reason here is that I come from a lean startup methodology approach. Now what is lean startup? Basically the idea is that before you invest heavily into any idea or into any project, you should really verify that there's demand for that first and that there's traction. And this is what any normal investor is gonna do. I mean, if you're going to a VC or an angel investor even, they're going to want to see traction before they invest in you. And you should also take that approach with your time. 
So by creating a crowdfunding platform off of a WordPress framework, or really just even a white label framework, it's gonna save you a lot of time and it's going to save you a lot of money. And I know that WordPress doesn't sound sexy and like, isn't that really what you're supposed to like build blogs off of? No, it's actually a very diverse framework. You can build lots of different types of websites off of WordPress. And the goal here is not the full, you know, fully realized crowdfunding platform. It's to be able to test with actual users the demand for the website and for your product. So building off of WordPress, using a WordPress plugin like Ignition Deck, uh, sorry, Ignition Deck, or other plugins that are out there, are that's one way to set up a crowdfunding platform. And there are actually lots of themes out there too. Like there are a good number of WordPress themes that you can choose from to make it look extremely professional. So either going with WordPress or a white label service provider that's basically gonna give you all the functionality and you're just renting the crowdfunding platform from them, I think that's probably the best way for the majority of you out there to first get the minimum viable product out there and then test. The fourth way is more of a creative way. Um, this probably isn't gonna be for everyone, but if I don't know about you, but I have noticed many, many people who have launched crowdfunding campaigns that have then fizzled out. Like I get emails all the time, hey Sal, I just launched this new crowdfunding platform for this niche, you know, I'm really trying to get the word out, and then I check up with them in say two years time, and that platform has fizzled out, or they're no longer serious about the project, or for whatever reason, maybe they don't have the funds to keep it going. So you can actually approach one of these, what I consider to be, distressed assets or one of these platforms that are inactive and actually purchase that from the owner. Or you could work out a deal where maybe they own like a small amount and you take over the platform. And you probably would have to, to rebrand it, you know, to create a whole new story, maybe even re-go after a whole new niche. But that's another way to acquire the assets necessary to, to test this initial business idea. And again, this is all about testing. This is all about verifying. This is something that you should spend time on. To be very frank here, I don't think that starting a platform, the technical side of starting a platform is the hardest thing. Coding, it does seem intimidating obviously, but the actual technical side of the, the website is not the hardest thing. The hardest thing is finding something that differentiates you from the competition and marketing that platform, getting projects on, getting regular backers on, getting people to use this platform. That is actually the hardest thing. Wow, look at this, like all these <laughs> fighter jets that are flying above. You might be able to hear that in the background. Uh, sorry, like ADD here. But to give you like an example here, if we look into Manhattan, we look into New York City, I am willing to bet that on like most corners of the street, there is a deli, there is a restaurant, there is an enormous amount of competition. In New York City, literally, restaurants are starting up all the time, delis are starting up all the time, people are starting physical businesses all the time, and many times, a year's down the road, six months down the road, you go, you see this restaurant you went to, you maybe liked it a bit, it's no longer there. Why? you need to differentiate yourself from the competition, and that is the long game. I hope that some of these techniques or ways to going about starting a platform are helpful. If you do choose to implement any of these, let me know, leave me, leave me a comment. You know, let me know if you have any questions. Also, give me a thumbs up uh, and come subscribe to this YouTube channel. I will be putting out more content. I think I'm also gonna do a video on actually marketing the crowdfunding platform, so you should stay tuned for that. But I will have the rest of the links and the, le the rest of the resources in the show notes for this YouTube channel. Guys, again, my name is Salvador Brigman. I hope some of this advice was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.